So that is the horizontal line test, which is essentially a vertical line test for the inverse function. Okay, let's now talk about domain and range. Because we flipped our inputs and our outputs, the domain and range are also flipped, assuming that the inverse function does exist, of course. For example, if the domain of f of x, or the domain of f of x becomes the range for f inverse, and the range for f of x becomes the domain for f inverse. The example I have is f of x equals the square root of x. Actually, let's make this a little bit more interesting. We'll look at f of x equals the negative square root of x. Well, we know that square root of x looks like this. So the negative will reflect across the x-axis, giving me the graph that you now see on your screen. This function, f of x, has a domain of 0 to infinity and a range of negative infinity to zero. So we can plug in all positive real numbers for x, and as an output, we will get all negative real numbers for y. Well, we can sketch the y equals x curve, y equals x line, and we'll see then that the reflection looks like this. So the blue is our f inverse of x. We could also solve for this graphically using the steps that we have. So we s switch out the x and y, we solve for y, But because the original function's domain is 0 to infinity and the range is negative infinity to 0, this means for the inverse function, the range, sorry, the domain is negative infinity to 0, and the range is 0 to infinity. That gives us the left side of the parabola y equals x squared. And that's what we're representing here. So there you have it, looking at finding the equation for an inverse function, sketching the graph across the y equals x line, and also looking at the domain and range and how they relate between the original and the inverse function. All right, one last thing to talk about is the composi composition of a function and its inverse. When we compose a function and its inverse, so think about this. We already know that for a function we plug in x, we get an output, maybe y. For the inverse, we go backwards. So if we were to plug in an x and get out in a y, as we would with f, and f of x, we can then plug that y into f prime, that brings us back to x. We see the same thing with f of f inverse of x. We start with y, plug it into f inverse, we get x. Plug that value into f, we get out y. So no matter how we compose our function and its inverse, if we have a pair we have that paired up in that composition, f inverse of f or f of f inverse. Whatever the input is, we get as an output. So f inverse of f of 2x is 2x. f of f inverse of 1 over x is 1 over x. That composition is very important.